Hey, what up, Facebook Live? How y'all doing tonight? Um, Just coming on here, man, uh, to talk about something that I always talk about that I'm probably never going to stop talking about, and that's the big D word. No, I'm not talking about dominating. Um, no, I'm not talking about dogs. I'm talking about divorce. And um, <laughs> I've been talking about divorce for the last three years. Being, um, the reason being is because I am... Uh, I'm not a divorcee. I'm not claiming that. I have um, was married and now I'm not, so I'm divorced. And um, I like to share my experience from divorce and the things that I've learned about divorce because there's so many people out there that have either gone through divorce, that are going through divorce. Um, maybe they grew up in a household where their parents um, were divorced. And there's really no, in the Christian community, there's really no resources to really help people navigate what that looks like, right? And since day one, since I started talking about this, the Christian people hate me because they're like, oh, you can't talk about that. Yo, shut up. Like, I'm going to be real with y'all. Uh, like, this conversation is a conversation that needs to be had. It needs to be had more often. Um, and it needs to be had openly in the church. The reason being is because there's a lot of people that, like, number one, that's married that shouldn't be married. Number two is a lot of people that's divorced that don't want to go to church no more because they feel like, you know, it was a death sentence. Like they're going to go to hell because they filed for divorce and life is over with. And and the church ain't too welcoming to people who experience divorce. Right. So um, I, I, I just don't I don't think I'm ever going to stop talking about this. And I know I'll be making a lot of Christian people mad when I talk about this stuff. And frankly, I don't care. Um, Like, I really don't care. Um, it, it doesn't bother me that they feel some type of way. It don't bother me that, you know, they, they challenge my faith or, you know, try to say I ain't godly or I ain't Christian or I don't read my Bible enough. They, they challenge my intellect, which like they should never do because like, I'm, I'm, I'm a very smart person. Um, I read my Bible pretty well. I actually have a bachelor's degree in theology. Um, I know the Bible well. Um, and not only do I know the Bible well, I know God well, like just through, my own personal experience and personal journey. So when I talk about these things, um, I talk about them from a place not promoting divorce, but helping people that are in that situation so that they can understand that, yo, just because it happened to you don't mean that life is over for you, right? Just because it happened to you don't mean that God has left you. Just because, you know, somebody has divorced you, that don't mean that you're not worthy. Or just because you filed for divorce doesn't mean that God hates you, right? So, we got to we got to chill like seriously and um just just a disclaimer i made a, a status um about um people leaving unhealthy relationships and you might have seen a post from somebody or somebody else that looked like you know like i'm like we we in a thing we not <laughs> so it is is not we not so don't worry about that um i, I don't you know, it, it, is, it is what it is. Um, sometimes, you know, when you say certain things, it, it, it hurts people feelings. And I mean, all I say, if, if the shoe fits, wear it, you know, if it don't keep moving, you know, and if I do offend you or you feel some type of way, there's an easy way to solve that, you know, because we're Christian, right? The biblical way to do it is to approach your fellow brother or sister that's a Christian and tell them, hey, you offended me. Why you say that? Why you do this? This is what offended me. This is why it offended me. You know, try to come to a, an agreement or come to some form of reconciliation, but that's neither here or there. My point in making this live is to talk about divorce, right? So um, back in 2018, was it 2018? 2018, 2000, I don't even remember. Um, I filed for divorce. Um, I was done with my marriage. Um, it wasn't working. Um, I didn't want to be married anymore. I wasn't happy. It wasn't for me. Um, it wasn't beneficial for me in any type of way. Spiritually, um, it, it wasn't healthy for me. Um, I wasn't growing. I was dying. And and yes, I was doing, you know, the stuff I was supposed to do to make a marriage work, right? I was going to church. I was praying while I was reading my Bible. I was doing everything, but it just didn't work, right? And that's not to say that it's my ex-wife's fault or it's not my fault. Sometimes it just don't work. And we got to accept that, right? We got to we gotta throw away this fairy tale um, belief that like, you know, you know, um, everybody's supposed to be in love. And like when people get married, <clears throat> we, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't really invest in like 
the steps of like really marrying a person. We just, oh, I like them. They like me. We we look good together. Bam, let's get married. And y'all get married and then y'all realize that, you know, y'all not supposed to be together. Y'all not compatible. And you're, you're both are fighting each other. Two good people, right? Because they're not bad people. Two good people end up just bumping heads and it don't work. But And they, they, they do two things. They either it ends in a, a terrible divorce or they stay together and it's miserable. And they repeat this cycle of creating these unhealthy relationships. And I said to myself that I no longer want to be in a cycle of unhealthy relationships. I don't want my kids growing up thinking that the way that their mom and dad was married, that's the way that marriage looks. Right. I don't I didn't want them to think that this is how love looks because I didn't want them growing up. I didn't want my daughters growing up down talking a husband, being disrespectful. I didn't want my sons growing up, cheating on their wives and and diminishing their character and things like that. I didn't want that for my kids and I didn't want it for me. So I said, you know what? I'm out. I want a divorce. I'm done. I'm gone. And that's how it happened. The journey since then has been you know, it's been an uphill battle. It's been rough, um, but there was a lot of self-awareness. Um, a lot of, uh, deep inward, uh, reflection that I had to do, you know, search the inside of my heart to see where I was at, see what my issues was going through therapy, going to counseling, surrounding myself with, you know, my, my church family, um, different things like that. So many things I went through in these last three years that created and really got me to be the person I am today. And I'm thankful. And like, if I had to go back in time, honestly, I wouldn't change it for the while. I would do everything the exact same way, um, that I did it. Um, because it led me to where I'm at today. So, like, we got we to gotta kill that, like, oh, you can't talk about divorce. Because I'll be getting on here, and people be, I don't know, like, they they see my posts, and they they read stuff that I don't even be saying. <laughs> they, like, they be reading my status, and they be coming up with these conclusions of things that I'm saying. I'm like, nah, everything I said is clearly stated in my status and my posts. What you reading is what you want to be offended by. You know, so I don't get it, but, you know, we got to stop that. You know, I remember there was a time back I made a Facebook status and the Facebook status and I get married people always be feeling attacked when divorce and single people talk. That's another thing. Listen, married people. I used to be that way, too. Y'all not the cream of the crop. Right. Like, seriously. And this ain't no shade. This ain't no bitterness or anything like that, because I was like this, too. I thought because I was married, I was better than single people. I thought because I was married, I had something that single people or divorced people couldn't get. Like I had like this supernatural anointing that nobody else can can get because I was married. I felt like that way. Yeah, I was a a a, a, a hole. I, I thought that way. But after being married and um, divorced, I realized like, no, nah, that's not it. And there's a lot of married people that think that way. That think that, you know, because they're married, they have like this different anointing that's different from all the other Christians because they marry, right? Don't make sense. Um, you don't, marriage don't make you any more anointed than anybody else. Whatever God's purpose or call on your life is, is not amplified because you got married. It, it is what it is because God gave it to you. And a lot of married people think that way. Right. So every time I make a status or something, I'm talking about being divorced or I'm talking about relationships or I'm talking about being married. Married people get upset. So I made this status um, a few months ago and I said that a divorced person can help a married person before a married person can help a divorced person. Now, I'm going to say it again, because when I made the status, what the married people read was married people can't help people. And that's not what I said. Um, I said that a divorced person can help a married person before a married person can help a divorced person. Now, let's think about this practically and logically. A divorced person has been both married and divorced. So they know what it's like to be married and they know what it's like to be divorced. A married person has never been divorced. So there is nothing that they can offer to a divorced person that can really help them in that process of being divorced, like emotionally, the emotional toil, the process of it all, understanding the emotions behind it, like it's not much that they can offer, right? That didn't say that married people can't help a divorced person. It just said a divorced person can help a married person faster than the married person can help a divorced person. A lot of people didn't agree with me, right? 
They all, they went on a tangent. They wanted to rip a hole in me. They was going crazy. They, they said, look, you, you're pro-divorce and all this other. I'm not pro-divorce, never been pro-divorce. I believe in family. I believe in reconciliation. I believe in working it out. But I also believe that if you've done everything in your power to make that thing work and it's still not working, what you choose to do is between you and God. Now, I stand by that. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, so that's where I stand on that. So I'm getting into this, 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 I'm on this Facebook, you know, debacle or whatever. It wasn't beef because I didn't have an issue with them. I just disagree with them. And, and all these married people just coming at me, right? Telling me I'm wrong, telling me I'm this, telling me I'm that. And not one time in any of those posts that I tell any of those married people they were wrong. The only thing I said was I disagree. But they told me I was wrong and everything. It's even one point, one married person said, we don't believe in divorce. Divorce isn't an option. If if you can't do it, separate. And I told them, just my personal opinion, that I don't believe in separation. Because if you're going to separate, you might as well get a divorce. Because what's the point of separation? You're going to separate. And y'all going to do y'all single thing. Y'all going to be out there separated doing your single thing. And then y'all going to try to come back together and like, oh, it don't matter because we were separated. Nah, nigga. I mean, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't mean to say the N word. Um, <laughs> nah, like if you're going to separate, you might as well get a divorce. Like it don't make sense to separate at all. Um, and if you get a divorce and you want to work that thing out again, get remarried then. Like, like it's really that simple. Um, and, you know, they went ham on me. No. And I told them, like, divorce is an option. And we got to stop telling people that divorce is not an option. Because what you do when you say that this isn't a pro-divorce thing. When you tell people divorce is not an option, when they get a divorce, then what? Because if I'm a Christian and you tell me divorce is not an option and I get a divorce, what you're telling me is that because of my divorce, I no longer have access to God. I no longer can be connected to God because I got the divorce. So we got to stop telling people that divorce is an option. The reality of it, somebody can go get a divorce. That's an option. Is it, is it the right option? Maybe not. You know, but it's an option. We have to stop treating divorce like this cancer because what ends up happening is when people get divorced in the church, in, in Christian communities, they now feel banished. They now feel like, you know, oh, I can't get back to God or I'm going straight to hell. Most people leave churches. They become atheists. They like stop going because the church has set up this thing like we only accept marriage. If you get married and you get a divorce, you're no longer part of us. And we got to stop that. We got to have this conversation about divorce. I know people feel some type of way and I know I'll be pissing a lot of people off. But frankly, I don't care. I don't care at all that you're mad or you're upset because the way that I feel or the way that I express what I feel. Now, you might try to say something slick. I ain't, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to attack you because I love everybody. But I will tell you this. Don't ever challenge my like my biblical knowledge at all. Like, seriously, like, don't don't do that to yourself because um, I'll make you look stupid. Um, but anyways, Tommy, stay cool. <laughs> anyways, um, like I said, man, like, seriously, man, we got to we got to we got to have this conversation more. We got to talk about divorce and what that looks like in the Christian community, because frankly, people that are Christian are getting divorces and it ain't all the devil. Like we, we got to kill that. Oh, the no, no, no. Some people should have never been married in the first place. Listen, I know for a fact I shouldn't have been married to the person I was married to. Um, and I, I know that it was a, a my choice thing. That wasn't like a God or a thing. It was a my choice thing. And that's not saying anything negative about my ex-wife. She probably tell you the same thing. She should have never married me. Now, what that means to her is completely different than what it means to me. But we're two different people who weren't compatible in the first place that we were going to church together. We liked each other a little bit. And, you know, the church community pressured us to get married and we ended up getting married. And it was terrible from day one. You know, it was it. I, I, I say this wholeheartedly without any bitterness or grudge. Like it was terrible from day one, literally terrible from day one. I don't remember any highlights or like good moments that was like, man, like I'm glad I'm in this relationship. And we did everything. We did everything. We Well, we tried to do everything in our power to make it work. We went to therapy. We went to counseling. We did all of that. And it still wasn't working. And it got to the point where like now I'm in this relationship feeling some, feeling resentment 
bitterness is building up in my heart because I'm, I'm in this relationship with this person. I don't want to be in a relationship. This person doesn't feel like a friend. This person feels like an enemy that I'm in a relationship with. And now that's doing something to my heart. So I had to ask myself, like, yo, do, is this how I want to live? Do I want to live in a situation where I'm portraying to be this loving Christian while at home? I'm miserable. I, I, my heart is filled with hatred. My heart is filled with bitterness. Or do I just want to rip the Band-Aid off and go about it and, and, and deal with it between me and God? Because that's what I have to do. Now, I will say this, like, because people be thinking, like I said, people be thinking I'll be pro-divorce. Nah, I'm not. You can talk to any any one of my friends or any one of my homies that have hit me up. Hey, yo, yo, tell me about this divorce thing, man. I think I want to get a divorce. And ask them what I tell them. Is that really what you want to do? Because this ain't sweet. This ain't what you want to do. Because when you make that decision, you got to live with the consequences of that. Okay? And some of the consequences of that is a whole bunch of money you're going to spend in court. <laughs> A whole bunch of money you're going to spend, uh, uh, you know, in child support and lawyer fees and all this stuff. Then you got to deal with the headache of, of dealing with a bitter spouse. Maybe that ex, that person didn't want to get a divorce. You left them. So you got, you got to deal with them being, uh, being, being, uh, spiteful, being evil, you know, doing stuff to make your life miserable. You got to live with that and you got to weigh your options. Is it that, oh, uh, there's a saying that say it's cheaper to keep her. It, it really is cheaper to keep her. But you have to get to the point where you say, okay, is it worth it? Am I willing to go through this process? The, the process of possibly not seeing my kids no more because the person is mad at me, right? You have to weigh those options. It ain't sweet. I'm telling y'all, it ain't sweet. But if you do it and you continue and you repent, you get your heart right, you get the healing that you need and pursue God Everything will work itself out. Even when the chaos keep coming at you, everything will work itself out. So to my married people, can y'all please, I'm begging y'all, please, please quit thinking y'all know everything. Like seriously. And I can say that because I was married. Like I thought I knew everything. I thought that being married was the ultimate goal of, of Christianity, right? I felt like that was like the, the pinnacle. You get saved, then you get married, then boom, you next to God because you married. Nah, that's not how it works. Marriage is, is optional. <laughs> you don't have to get married. You can stay single if you want to and still pursue the things of God and still be just as anointed as that married couple that you see on TV. Okay? So we have to tear down this, this ideology that like marriage like marriage is like the ultimate end goal of Christianity because it's not because some people ain't gonna get married and if you keep telling Christians that you know you got to get married they're gonna live their whole life stressed out you know the older they get they're gonna be more more stressed out more anxiety because they haven't got married yet or if they've been married and got divorced oh I can no longer pursue God or I can no longer achieve that thing that God had for me no nah, that's not how it works it's not how it works at all so you know, it is what it is. Like, like, like I said, look, if y'all thought I talked about divorce this, this past, listen, 2022, hey, buckle your seatbelts, buddy, because I'm going to talk about it all the time. Right. And the purpose of me talking about it is to get people healed. I ain't trying to get nobody divorced, but I look like encouraging people to get divorced. No, that's silly. I want you to work on you. Do whatever you got to do to make sure you're the best version. Because in marriage, if you ain't the best version of yourself, nine times out of ten, that marriage is going to fail. So if you ain't working on you and making sure that you're good, ain't no point of you being married. You you might as well join the divorce wagon. Might as well stay single. Okay? I, I my, my desire is that people really take the time to really know themselves, learn themselves before getting into a relationship, learn themselves before getting into a marriage so that when they enter a marriage, they enter a marriage whole where they ain't broken up, where they ain't relying on their spouse to fix whatever issues that they mommy and daddy caused or whatever trauma they had in their childhood. Right. That ain't the goal in marriage. The goal of marriage is two whole people coming together and pursuing God. But if one person, if both people are broken, y'all going to have a broken relationship the entire marriage until somebody put aside their pride and really work on getting whole. Or if one person come home and the other person get broken, that's going to be a chaotic marriage. But you got to trust God. Like the scriptures say, the unbelieving spouse sanctifies the, the unbelieving. Y'all know what that scripture is. I'm paraphrasing. I ain't got a quote. Go find it in the Bible. The Bible talks about that. 
But like, seriously, man, like, yeah, man, like no more. Like I, I made a status earlier. Divorce ain't the problem. Ill-advised marriage, ill-advised relationships are. Like, like the divorce is a result of an ill-advised relationship, right? Divorce is a result of a relationship that that didn't really put God first, right? And now, okay, let's say let's say you did experience divorce, right? And the marriage was bad, and the person did do you wrong, or you were that person that did somebody wrong, and you filed divorce, or the person divorced you. That don't mean that that's the end for you. You can get forgiveness too, and you don't have to remarry that person. You can go to God, ask for forgiveness, repent, change your ways, and you'll be good too. We got to get out of this mindset that because we mad at a person or because a person did us bogus, God like just going, yeah, man, I ain't, I ain't messing with them no more because they hurt you. That ain't how he work. What you, you think God worked like you? Nah, that, them his kids too. What I look like... <laughs> What I look like, I got two, I got two kids, TJ and London. What I look like if TJ came to me and said, Daddy, London hurt my feelings and London did this to me. And I tell TJ, you know what, son? Come on, I'm gonna take care of you. I ain't doing no, I ain't feeding London no more. I ain't buying London no more clothes. I ain't London can't stay in my house no more. What I look like doing that as a father? You think God do that to his people? Nah. So get that out of your mind. Like, what what's wrong with you? Okay, you're hurt. You're bitter. That, that's what you are right now. And you can be in denial all you want. You can tell people that you're good and you're not. You're not good. If you still want, if you still hurting and still bitter about that person that hurt you, you're not good, fam. And it's okay. As long as you can be honest with yourself. You're not going to see no change. Uh, I heard something today. They said change, uh, change happens at the intersection of self-awareness and action, right? A lot of people ain't self-aware. A lot of people ain't aware that, you know, hey, I got a problem. Hey, I'm still hurting about some things that happened when I was a kid and they impact all my other relationships. They, they think it's everybody else, but they don't, they don't look at themselves, right? Then there's the people who are self-aware. Like, yeah, I know I'm the problem, but they ain't taking no actions to fix the problem. They ain't going to therapy. They ain't going to counseling. They're not surrounding themselves with a community of people that's going to hold them accountable. So, like, I don't know, man. Feel how you feel. If you don't like Tommy because of the things I say, is like, I'm going to give, like, I encourage this. If y'all don't like the stuff that I post, delete me and block me from Facebook. It's really that simple. You ain't got to keep getting offended. I ain't trying to offend you, but you looking for offense. Delete yourself. It's better for your mental health. It's better for your emotional health to delete me, to block me, to unfollow me. Listen, I ain't going to miss you. I'm not going to miss you. And when I see you in public, I'm going I'm to try to hug you. I'm going to do all that. Because I don't, listen, Tommy don't hate nobody. Tommy ain't mad at nobody. Tommy, I love every, yeah, you right there that's watching this video on somebody else's live because you don't want to, because you don't want them to see, you don't want me to see your name pop up on this who watching thing. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You right there. I don't hate you. I love you. I love you, fam. I love you, bro. I love you, girl. You feel me? I love you. I love you. And I want the best for you. And if the best for you is to avoid getting offended by me, um, then delete delete it. Delete me. Unfollow me. Stop watching me. <laughs> I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to do that to you. So stop doing it to yourself. Okay? So it is what it is. Listen, man, people, y'all, hey. Listen, I'm going to say this to the, was it, to the cows come home. I'm going to preach this to the cows come home. Listen, what happens between you and whoever you in a relationship is between you and that person and God. Nobody else. Nobody else. What you choose to do, whether you choose to stay, whether you choose to leave, that's between you and God. And like I said, you going to have to live with those concepts. Now, God will forgive you. God's going to love you, but that doesn't erase the consequences that follows after that choice that you made. And that's that's the point that people be missing when I be talking because all they hear is, I don't know how they hear, every time they see me post something, get a divorce, get a divorce, get a divorce. I ain't never told nobody to get a divorce. I ain't never encouraged divorce. I ain't never told anybody that it's okay to get a divorce. Cause I listen, I don't, 
I don't I don't advocate for divorce. I advocate for family. Like I love family. Like people don't realize how important that is. Family is important, right? Relationships are important, right? To me, all of that stuff matters. But if you've done everything in your power, you've exhausted all means of reconciliation. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. And you got to, you and God going to have to deal with that. And you're going to have to walk through those consequences. And I told y'all what it is. Oh, oh, it's a headache. Oh, trust me. Getting, getting summons to court for false. <laughs> I, I was in court the other day for a restraining order. My, <laughs> I don't know if I can even talk about that. My, I got somebody filed a restraining order on me and I don't even see this person. <laughs> and they a church person, a preacher. All is the like, listen, there are consequences that come behind your decision and I'm accepting them. I, I know that this is part of the process and where I'm at now, had I not made that decision, listen, I ain't telling y'all to get no divorce, but for me, best decision I ever made in my life because who I am today sprouted from that divorce. I wouldn't be who I am today without that. The knowledge that I've obtained, the healing that I, the awareness that I gained from that relationship, from ending that relationship, because I didn't learn nothing while I was married. <laughs> ending that relationship taught me so much. But again, like I said, if you choose to leave, you choose to get a divorce, you're going to have to live with those consequences. So yeah, that crazy ex that's telling everybody not to like you, that crazy ex that's lying on your name, that crazy ex that's doing everything in their power to try to destroy you, take you to court, keep your kids from you. And it ain't just women. Dudes be doing it too. You're going to have to deal with that. You're going to have to live with that. That's, that's the consequences of it. Okay, that you, you're not you're not free from the consequences of it. You still got to live with that choice and you have to be OK with that. If that's what you choose to do. Like I told you, all <laughs> I was in court last week cracking up like this. Nigga, I, I, crap. I didn't did it again. Mark Zuckerberg, please don't um, kick me off Facebook for saying the N word. <laughs> I, I'm sitting up in there cracking up. But and, and on the inside, while I'm in that courtroom, I, I'm, I'm telling myself, yo, this is what you signed up for. You got to man up and, and, and take ownership of this and, and deal with it in a positive way. So, man, listen, it is what it is. Like I said, if y'all don't like me, don't like me. That's I'm completely fine with that. I like I still like you. I still love you. And I'm a root for you. I want you to win. I want you to be successful. I want you to I want you to get. Listen, I want you to thrive. I wrote a whole freaking book about divorce and I'm writing another one right now. And this one, okay, I should have put this one out first. And maybe people are, probably would have been more uh, open to accepting what I'm talking about. So the first book is just telling you how to thrive after divorce. Just giving you little steps and tools to take to, to you know, to, to get out of that funk of divorce and everything. But the second book that I'm writing has to do with dealing with that internal stuff. Because a lot of times we get out of relationships and we blame the other person. And the reality is, it's really stuff that, 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 that was going on within us that we never dealt with. I call, The name of the book is called I Hate My Life. But the way I got it, though, I'm going to kill him with this one. I, the, 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 the book uh, cover, it says, I hate my wife. But I got the W crossed out. And then there's a little L in there. And what that's insinuating is a lot of times we project those inward, internal things that we never dealt with onto our spouses. But the reality is they really issues that we need to deal with. So I should have put that book out first, but it's coming. It's coming. Y'all wait on that. Um, and it's going to help a lot of people. Listen, man, I just want to see people win. Whether you're married, divorced, single, you know, whatever, widow, I just want to see you win. I just want to see you thrive in the things of God. I want to see you winning. Like, I don't want to see nobody like suffering because of a choice or suffering because of a relationship that failed, Right. A failed relationship don't mean that it's over for you. Some of y'all still, man, listen, some of y'all, some of y'all mad because somebody left y'all. Do you know that you can get somebody else? <laughs> I, I don't know if you know that, but if they left you, you can get somebody else. Listen, and maybe, maybe that's a, uh, maybe you, maybe, you know, you dealing with some, um, some self-esteem issues or something, but man, 
I didn't see some of y'all. Some of y'all that got divorced, that's single now. Listen, you can slide in my DM. I'll hit you up. We can. <laughs> I'm, I'm just playing. No, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I'm just playing. But seriously, yo, you can, you can get somebody else. They gonna get somebody else. <laughs> why you, why you still sitting up there mad? Are like you making yourself look bad? Cause people gonna look at you like, man, I ain't. Psh. If that's how she is when she mad, if that's how he is when he mad, and I had to learn that because in the beginning, oh, I was hot. I was hot. I was, I was, and rightfully so, rightfully so, but I didn't, I didn't have control of my emotions. But now that I do, I realize, y'all, okay, I can't, I can't say that. It's stuff I'll be, I swear, I gotta, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make that book too. The, 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 the statuses I deleted or something like that. The things I didn't post, <laughs> make a whole book about stuff I didn't post. Um, I, I'll be wanting to post stuff. I'll, I'll be wanting to talk about the stuff that I got to deal with, the people that be talking crazy, but I don't. And you got to let that go because you holding yourself back. You know, you out of the situation now. Bam, it's over with. It's done. That person has left you. You've left that person. It's over with. Now what you going to do? Right? Like some of y'all, hey, I'm going to be real. Some of y'all missing the bag. Like, redemption, like, on, on some, just on some marketing stuff, right? Redemption sales. <laughs> like, I, any, I ain't going to hold you. Like, you can be off your story, just off of what you've been through and what you're going through. Like, man, you better, man, let that go. Get you a new boo. Or stay single if you want to, if that's what you want to do. But you ain't got to. I mean, listen, she want the finest girl in the world and he want the finest man in the world. There's always somebody that looks better and there's always somebody that's going to treat you better. So, like, let that go. Right, man. Listen, I'm so happy my ex got uh, a man and, and not because she was on my. But like the reality is, like, is I would be a fool to think that I was the best thing for her. Because I wasn't. Because if I was, we would still be together. Whoever she with now, that's the best, probably the best thing for her. And vice versa, same thing with me. Like, y'all got to understand, like, sometimes people just ain't compatible. And you got to be okay with that. That don't mean that you a bad person. That don't mean that your ex was a bad person. That just mean, yo, we tried this and we probably, this ain't even going to work. You like the color blue, she like the color red. That ain't going to work. <laughs> Like, I mean, I made that simple, but like the reality is compatibility is everything. And if you don't have those conversations prior to marriage, you get married and down the line, you realize, yo, I, this ain't, this ain't what I signed up for. Right. So, Hey, it is what it is, man. I, people be in their feelings when I post stuff and they be throwing little shots. I see it. It's cool. I'm I'm not gonna play that game with them. I love everybody. Like I love everybody. Every single person I love dearly. I don't there's not a person on this earth right now that I can think of that I like, man, I can't stand that nigga. Three. Three. I did it three times. Lord, please let me stop saying the N-word. I promise this 2022 is it's out of my vocabulary. <laughs> okay. But like seriously, like Dang, I didn't lost my whole train of thought. I was on to something good too. Oh, um, yeah, man. Just let that go. Don't be bitter. Don't be mad. You know, don't be offended. You know? Relationships, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And you gotta, cause this is the thing. A lot of people are still married now, not because they're trying to honor God. Like we, like, if we, if we, if we being real honest. Because that, that's what they be trying to say. Oh, I want to honor God. Nah, that ain't why you still married. The only reason why you still married is because you worried about... You, you're right. You can't minister out of business. The only reason why you still married is because you worried about what other people going to think. Oh, man, if we get a divorce, man, I ain't going to be able to go here. They ain't going to accept me here. They ain't going to... Like, you worried about... like yeah, People live their lives through the opinions of others. Oh, and then when people, oh, because I made a status about that. Oh, you you gave us hope. 
Oh, y'all can't get divorced. You that they they give us hope. Well, your hope shouldn't be in them. They they they're human. We are all human beings, which means that we are all capable of falling to human emotions, the human flaw. Okay, so we gotta get out of that. You know, I'm honored. Some of y'all, I, I listen. Some of y'all not honoring God, and I swear to God, it, I'm sorry. I don't mean to swear to you. Um, I promise you, God be sitting like, man, don't be saying that y'all honoring me. Because y'all stay married. Y'all be staying married and be at home miserable. Cursing each other out. Cheating on each other. Talking about some y'all honoring. Y'all ain't honoring God because y'all stay married. Y'all just y'all just don't want to have to go through the, the whole this this part. The, the, the tough part. Right? Let, let's be real. Don't, 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 don't be saying that. I, listen. I've been in church long enough. And I didn't seen enough to know when... Is married people that be like, man, I can't stand my wife. <laughs> I wish I can kill the bit. <laughs> my bad, y'all. I'm, I'm wilding out tonight. Forgive me. Forgive me. Like, <laughs> seriously, man. Like, it be women that, like, can't stand their husband. The sight of them irks them. They skin crawl. When they, like, that ain't honoring God because you stand with that person. Yeah, you broke the, you been broke the covenant to love. Right? Through sickness and health. That's the value y'all made through better or worse. <laughs> See, that was close. Through sickness and health, through better or worse, right? But when it get worse, you don't love them no more. That covenant's broken already. So what you talking about? You honoring God. You not honoring God. So quit saying that. Y'all only married because what it's gonna look like. Y'all only still married because what some of y'all married because y'all cause cause y'all got kids. Oh man, I, we don't want our kids. And then I I was Countless times. We see it all the time. Soon as that last kid turned 18, then we see, oh man, so and so getting divorced after 25 years? After after 30 years, they getting divorced. Yeah, because they didn't want to be married. And they was too concerned and caught up in the opinions of others. And they stayed married, staying miserable, creating this cycle with a family. Like you, you talking about you, you want to stay married for your kid. Now your kids getting into bad relationships. Thinking that is okay because it's the norm. That's what they saw growing up. Oh, it's okay if I curse out my, my, my spouse. It's okay. It's okay if I don't give my spouse none. Huh? Hmm? Hmm? Huh? It's okay. It's okay if I go talk about my spouse to everybody else. Right? I go to my mama house. I go to my cousin house. I go to the people at church and tell them how bad of a person my spouse is. It's okay for me to do that. That's what y'all creating when y'all be staying married and you know you don't want to be. So that's honoring God. That chaos that you creating in that home is, is honoring God. But a person that get a divorce because they don't want to do that isn't honoring God. Like, let's be real. Like, seriously, let's be real. Don't be trying to, oh, you know, you got to honor God, stay married. God is for, God is for marriage. He is for marriage. The right kind, not your kind. <laughs> you be talking about some, talking about some people ain't, they ain't, ain't mad. You be hell in a marriage. Always arguing, always nagging, always bitter, all telling everybody y'all business. Listen, I remember one time I was married. It pissed me clean off. Um, I had lost my job, uh, when was this? I lost my, I got fired from this job. Right, that's a whole nother story. And my, so at, I didn't have a way to provide for my family at that time. It was like a, a two month span. And you know, my ex was going around telling about, yeah, I gotta, I gotta provide cause my husband ain't working. Hey, why are you telling people I ain't working? Like that ain't their business. <laughs> you know, it's, it's stuff like that. Like seriously, like, you know, I'm joking. It don't, it don't bother me now. That was, that was, it was it's funny now. But like seriously, like you, you causing hell at home. Your kids don't like you. <laughs> you know your your kids don't like you. You always arguing. You 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 selfish. Uh, it's all about you. Uh uh uh. You you telling everybody your business. You holding out on your spouse. You ain't giving her none. She ain't giving you none. Y'all y'all sneaking and 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 hardening everybody else. Facebook profile picture the people that you wish you can be with now disclaimer i'll be doing that but i'm single i can do that so you know i'll be in, i'll be in dms i'll be all that stuff because i'm single i can do that so feel how you feel about that anyway but you married and you doing all that but because you still married you honoring god that ain't honoring god fam 
Like, contrary to what you think, that ain't honoring God. Like, I've honored God more in my divorce than I did when I was married. And that's real talk. In my time of being divorced, I've been closer to God. Than, I've never been this close to God in my life. Never prayed as much. Never read my Bible as much. In my divorce, I honor God more. I've, I've, I love people more. And, you know, some people, well, you could, you should have did that when you married. I should have, right? But I didn't. And I, it, it, the environment that I was in didn't create that, didn't create that for me. And I, and I didn't know how to create that. Okay. But you honoring God, but your household is terrible. Nah, you know, so let's be real. Okay. Now to the people that, that are married, that are honoring God the right way, my hat's off to you. I respect you. I, I, I know a few married people that I love and respect. And I, I do look up to their marriage because I, I, I know that it's possible. Right. I know that real love is possible Two people that really love each other, that really got each other back. That's really for each other. That's going to defend each other in public. That's going to really ride for each other. That ain't going to let nobody come in and talk crazy about their spouse. It's going to I I know couples like that and I respect that. Right. So we got to we got to chill out on this. This not talking about divorce. We need to talk about it because, man, it's, it's so many people dealing with that in the church. Like, like seriously, man, like say what you want. I'm pro marriage. I'm gonna get married again. I already got my eye on, on the next one. You feel me? Huh? Huh? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to get married again. So I'm not pro divorce. Cause I don't, I don't plan on getting divorced when I get married again, you know, cause I have a plan. I have an idea. I know what I want now. I didn't know what I want, wanted when I got married at 20. I was young. I was dumb. I was ignorant. I didn't know anything. And no one, there was no positive influence on marriage in my life. You know, I talk about this all the time. The, the church I was going to at the time when I got married, the pastor and the first lady, they was always fighting. I, I would go to marriage counseling with them and it turned into a vending session with him. Man, she do the same thing, man. I'm like, man, you can't, you can't help me. <laughs> I'm helping you. <laughs> like, so it's like, I didn't have an example. So, you know, and I, and I blindly went along with it. Blindly went along with it, man. So like, I'm telling y'all, listen to all my divorced people out there. If you tired of people talking about you, tired of people telling you that you made a mistake, come on over to death row. <laughs> no, I'll just play it. Uh, but seriously, man, like to my divorce people, like, hey, it happened. You divorced now. Okay. It's it's the reality. You're not a divorcee. You're a person that got a divorce. Okay. It happened. What you gonna do now? Okay. Make up for it. Not don't make up for it. No, nah, you don't have to make up for it because you got a divorce. Live your life. Okay. Pursue God. Pursue, like, get to know you. Learn to love you. Get the help you need. Listen, man, I had to, without, when it, like, in my process of divorce, man, it was people. I, and I don't cut people off, but there's people that fell off. And I had to get to the point that I realized that, like, there are people that's not going to understand my journey. There are going to be people who have good intentions, but don't know what they talking about. And that will distract you. You got to cut out the noise. You got to focus on you, what's important, getting you healthy and how to do that. Man, if it weren't for my church family, I love them people so much. You know, I, I it's family that I don't even talk to no more. And God sent people that, like, filled those voids for me and my kids, right? So, like, going through that process and learning to love myself. It's people right now that still be thinking, oh, Tommy, something wrong with Tommy. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Nigga, you ain't, dang it, I did it. A, that's the fourth time. That's four. Four N-words in my life. Mark Zuckerberg, please don't. Don't cut me out. <laughs> um, it's people right now that, that still think, and we ain't talk. And this is I just a side side note, side conversation, kind of off topic, but not really. Look, y'all be thinking, y'all be knowing people. Like, it kills me when somebody, when I hear from somebody that somebody told them something about me, and I ain't talked to that person in years. And they listen to them. So-and-so told me you this. I ain't talked to this person in 
three or four years. They don't know who I am no more. <laughs> we don't have that relationship no more. I've changed so much in the last year. I've changed so much in the last six months. If you knew me six months ago, you don't know me now. So it's like this idea that because I know a person or because I'm their sister, I'm their brother, I'm their cousin, I'm their friend, we grew up together, this and that. They think they, they know you. No, you don't. Because you were married to me, you think you know. You don't. That when when life goes on and once that communicate that intimate communication and intimacy ain't always like sexual stuff intimacy intimacy is just closeness right once that closeness is gone you no longer have access to my life you don't know what's going on in my life you can't give a judgment on who i am what type of person i am what i'm dealing with if i'm good if i'm not like you don't have that access and if you think you do you foolish right so you got to understand like there are going to be people that think they know you. There are going to be people that still think, oh, man, this person like this. Oh, this person is this. Your ex going to feel that way about you. They going to tell everybody that you hell. They going to tell everybody that you this. They going to tell everybody that you that. But you got to be confident enough in knowing I'm changing. I know that I'm progressing and becoming a better person. What they say about me, how they feel about me ain't truth. Right. The moment you give in to that, the moment you st you really start going crazy because you don't want to defend yourself. You don't want to try to convince them. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not that person. That's not who I am. Listen, screw that. Let them think what they think. I'm telling you from experience, there is no better peace than not caring about what people think. Like the moment I stop caring, like stop trying to convince. Listen. I had people, <laughs> I, people would, people would tell like my mom and my dad stuff about me and my parents would like, you need to stop doing this. And I used to try to convince them like, no, that ain't true. Like I, I, I like <laughs> that didn't happen, but because the person told them that, that, you know, they believed it. And it's like, I realized that I was more stressed out trying to convince them that this wasn't true. And when it got to that point, I realized, yo, they're going to believe what they're going to believe no matter what. So let me focus on myself and my kids and make sure I'm good because I ain't got time for that. And when I decided to do that, when I say the peace was so overwhelming, like I've never been this at peace in my life. When I say I'm happy, happy is an understatement. Like it ain't no fake happiness. This ain't no fake joy. Like everything about my life is peaceful. The only time I got chaos is when I got to go to court because people be lying on me. <laughs> whatever. That's the only time I got chaos or whatever. And I, even the people that, that be listening to the people that be lying on me. I, and I told the judge this. I said, Your Honor, I said, I understand that um, people feel a certain type of way. Perspective is everything. And if their perception of me is to be offended, everything that I do will offend them. So I'm not saying that they're lying anymore. I'm not saying that they make... It's just, if that's their perspective, it's their perspective. And I can't change that. I can only focus on me. That's what I told the judge. You know, so I don't, I don't even, I'm in court, even, even in court, even listening to like ridiculous stories and stuff like that, I'm, I'm smiling because I'm at peace because I know that I'm on the right path. Like everything that's happening in my life right now, the opportunities, the doors that's opening up, the relationships that's being built. If I wasn't on the right path, I know for a fact that I wouldn't be in the situation that I'm in right now, okay? And you got to get to that point, okay? I'm talking to my divorced people right now because married people don't like divorced people. <laughs> so I'm going to stand up for y'all and I'm going to be that person that's going to scream on the mountaintop that y'all people too, that God going to use y'all too, that y'all got a life, that God going to open up doors for you, God going to use you, you anointed just as much as the married person, I'm going to be that voice for you. And to the married people... Man, like, you don't know it all, you know? I know people, and they like I told y'all, time spent don't mean nothing. Oh, I've been married for, for, for 10 plus years. I've been married for 20 plus years. I've been married for 30 plus years. But in them 30 years, you've been miserable for 29 years. And the only good year you had was that first year, and that's because it was the honeymoon. You was finally able to smash her or smash him, <laughs> whatever. But, like, seriously, time spent don't mean nothing. You're, the the longer you've been married don't mean that you have the 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 uh the credibility to to speak on relationships to speak on marriage to speak on like some of y'all I know some of y'all and I've seen some of y'all married ain't no way in hell I would let y'all give me any marriage advice and that's real talk here you go again 
Hey, pray for my brother Austin because he always cutting me up. And I told him I quit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love you, Austin. I love you. I love you. But yeah, man, like seriously, man, like to my married people, like ease up. Okay. You don't understand everything. Okay. Like, like real talk. Like this ain't no shade. This ain't no nothing. Like real talk. Like if you haven't been divorced, that's a whole experience that you cannot relate to. I don't care how much relationship advice you try to get them because you've been married for this amount of years. Being divorced is an experience like no other. Okay. You can't compare it to when you broke up with your boyfriend in high school. You can't compare it to nothing else. Like that's a whole experience within itself. And you have to be okay with, okay, I can't, I can't, I can't help this person. You know, I can only speak from this perspective, but I can't help them in a way. And you got to be okay with like, okay, we got to get, we got to empower people who've been divorced and not just the people who been divorced and remarried. Okay. Because there's some people that got divorced. That's never going to remarry and not because they bitter and not because it's because simply because that's not what they're called to. They're not called to marriage anymore. And we have to open up that door to allow people who have been divorced, who've and, and not just because they got divorced, but people who actually got healed, got delivered, God made them whole again, and let them speak to the lives of those people who's going through divorce, who are in divorce, to show them you can still win in divorce. You can still be successful after divorce. God can still use you after divorce. And until we do that, we're going to continue to see this cycle in the church of, you know, constant divorce. Like, I really pray for like, churches and the singles. I don't, I don't really know that many churches that got like a strong singles ministry because I, when I was single and I used to go to these things, marriage ministries are cool, you know? Um, and the singles ministry, the only thing they do is all they do is tell people don't have sex. And like, that's like they, that's like they high point. And it's so much more to being single, you know, and it needs to be a, a place like they need to have a divorce conference, right? I mean, you know, Maybe I'll maybe I'll make one, okay? A divorce conference for people who who are either in divorce, going through divorce, to 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 show them how to navigate divorce. Because a lot of times, if even if a person is contemplating divorce, if they can speak to somebody that has been through divorce at a hill, it may help them reconsider. You know what? Maybe I'll give. Maybe I've been looking at this marriage thing the wrong way. Maybe I'll give it another try, right? Because if if I'm if I'm going through the if I'm going through a divorce or I'm contemplating divorce and a divorce person comes to me and say, hey, listen, this ain't what you want. <laughs> like, look, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, this you, this 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 is gonna happen. Maybe it'll like, hey, you know what? He right, I don't want that. Right? And then there's the people who are in in the back of your church, sitting down, they ain't gonna never come down to the altar because they don't feel like it's a place for them. They don't feel like they can serve. They don't feel like they can do anything because they've been divorced. It's like they feel like they got this big shirt on and say, hey, I'm divorced. I'm no longer good. We got to we got to stop that. And until we do. I'm telling y'all, man, feel how y'all want to feel. You can say I ain't biblical, whatever. Hey, I listen to God and I do what he say. Not all the time. I ain't going to even hold you. I'll be I'll be I'll be disobeying God, but I'm trying to get better at that. It is what it is, right? So, man, listen, I, I'm I'm just a real person. I, I'm not I'm not for the the foo foo stuff. I'm not for the 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 fluffy stuff. I'm a real person with real emotions, real feelings, that experience real life situations, and I want people to be honest with themselves. Like, yo, I'm struggling here. This is my deficiency, and until we do that, man, we can't help nobody, right? And to the people who feel like this is another thing that get on my nerves. I, I know I've been talking for a minute. Like people be feeling like, oh, you got a divorce, so you can't serve God no more, or you can't do this, or you should. No. If that's a man thing, if I go through a, a situation and I get it right with God, whether that's if I go through divorce, ask for repentance and get my life right with God, that don't stop me from being able to be used by God. So that shouldn't stop a person from being able to continue to do the things of God, right? You ain't God. You can't put them in heaven or hell. If God say they cool and you say they don't, who you think who you think they should listen to? 
You or God? So, like, seriously, man, y'all got to y'all be killing me with that stuff. And, and my thing is, if, if you feel that way, any, you, you need to feel that way completely and wholly. This is how I feel. There are certain things in the Bible that are, to some people, are questionable, right? I got to be careful when I say this because I don't want nobody walking away confused. If you're going to live by the Bible, live by the Bible completely. Don't pick and choose what you want to live by and then and then uh, point fingers at people who don't live by the stuff that you pick and choose you, you live by. If you're going to live by completely, live by the Bible completely, right? I, I see it all the time, and this is where I begin, people. They'll point the finger out for people who... Who who uh who sin, who fell short, or people who maybe they did commit adultery, maybe they did uh uh file for divorce and all this other. They be pointing the finger, but they be the same people that be offended by people, but don't go to people to address the offense, like the Bible tells you to do. So, like if you ain't gonna live by the Bible completely, quit pointing out stuff that people ain't doing and saying they ain't they not living biblically, because you ain't either. So worry about yourself. Like I say all the time. Y'all be trying to micromanage other people's lives. Worry about you. Like, literally, worry about you. I don't even know what this is in my hand. Worry about yourself. Make sure that you good. Get the plank out of your eye before you... Listen, I, I got a whole new revelation on that scripture. And I'm pretty sure somebody already got this revelation, but I never looked at it this way. It say, uh, get the plank out of your eye before you try to get the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Right? You got a whole plank in your eye and you're trying to get the speck out of the other person's eye. Not only that, imagine a surgeon. Like imagine you being a surgeon, a doctor, you in surgery. And you got a whole thing that's restricting your vision. You know how much damage you can do to people because you don't got that eye? Because that ain't out of your eye, but you're trying to fix everything. And, and sometimes you be... You be uh, good, well-meaning, well-intentioned trying to help people, but you got a whole plank covering your eye. You're going to do more damage. You're going to hurt more people because you got that plank in your eye. Get the plank out of your eye before you start trying to point out everybody else's flaws, before you try to help everybody else, before you try to fix everybody else. Get the plank out of your eye. You're doing way more damage. Some of y'all broken, bitter, hurting, and you out here trying to minister to people. You doing more damage. You causing causing division. But but you but you of God, right? You doing the things of God. Nah. You causing more damage. You ain't there's nowhere in the scripture where God honors division. And you causing division. You being messy. You 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 gossiping about other people. But you ministering? What they what they do that at? You tell me. Cause I ain't never seen in the Bible where Jesus was gossiping about uh, uh, the, 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 the blind man to the other people. Yeah. I, I, I just have to heal this blind dude. He's out. He's just out there. Wow. I have to heal. Like nowhere in the Bible. Do you see gossip being okay, but you doing it. You being messy, planting seeds of division, confusing people. Like I learned my lesson here. This is where I learned my lesson. When I, and I talk about this a lot where the blood is on my hands. I had left a church and when I left the church, I was upset. I was hurting because the pastor was attacking me. The pastor was lying on me and all this other stuff. And I went to another church where like, I really felt God. And then my heart, my heart, my intention was, man, I got to get these people to get some of what I'm getting here because it's going to help them. And the church that they have right now ain't good for them. And so I'm going to, Hey man, come here, man. That ain't, they not right over there. You need to come over here. And they listen to me, right? And they come over to the church I'm at and they don't connect with them. But I've removed them from the place that was connected to them. And now this person fall away from God, no longer in church. Why? Because I thought that what I was eating, they could eat too. And it did more damage than good, right? Maybe that church wasn't good for me. Not maybe it wasn't. It wasn't good for me at all. But it was great for them. They needed that, but because my, my bitterness, my hurt, I'm pulling people who needed to be there. Okay. So like y'all got to chill on all of that stuff. God going to hold you accountable, right? Like quit gossiping, 
Quit, quit being mean. Quit. Like literally, Jesus said, he gave you two commandments and we keep breaking these commandments. Love God with all your heart and love people like you love yourself. Why can't we do those two things? When you do those two things, you cover every other commandment. But we want to hate. We want to be bitter. We want to be mad. How can you minister and be evil to people? Like How can you minister and, and, and be divisive and, and, and spit vitriol in? Like, how can you minister like that? Gossiping about people, spreading rumors about people. Even, even if you spread in truth, you're not spreading truth like your, your purpose of spreading your truth is to tear people down. It's not to, 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 to heal them or to get them closer to God. Because if the, the scriptures say, if your brother fall, you're supposed to help pick them back up. Okay? So if, you, if there's a Christian who's slipping and messing up, your job ain't to expose them. Your job is to, hey, yo, listen, this ain't right. You shouldn't be doing this. How can we get you from doing that? How can we get you back on track? That's that's what your approach supposed to be. And this is scripture. So anybody that try to say, oh, yeah, I know my Bible. This is the part that y'all don't like listening to because y'all want to be in your feelings and y'all want to pick and choose the people who who the Bible applies to and who it don't, who God love and who God don't. You ain't no judge. You can't put nobody in heaven or hell. And, I, and, and quite frankly, God don't listen to you and you don't listen to him. So, like, get out of your feelings Accept the fact that you hurting right now and deal with that before you go out trying to minister. Because y'all, listen, it is what it is, man. To the six people that still listen, I love y'all. I ain't even try to get on here this long because people be tripping. Like I said, if if y'all see me post something and it look and somebody post something that look like they responding to me, I I ain't playing that game with them. That it ain't me. <laughs> it ain't me, okay? It's them. They the they the weirdo, okay? So don't be Saying like, don't be thinking that I'm beef because I'm not beefing with nobody. I don't have no issues with nobody. This, they they got issues with me. That's they thing. That ain't you know. I'm good. You know they they offended. They don't want to come to me and deal with it. It is what it is. So if y'all see me post something and then y'all scrolling, oh this look like a response to something Tommy bro. Or even if y'all see something that look like I responded to something they say, nah, I'm just on a tangent right now and I'm just talking about some of the same things and just a coincidence. That's all. Nothing more. Nothing less. But y'all be blessed. It's late. I'm enjoying my vacation before I got to go back to work. I'll holler at y'all. Share this, tag people to it. Peace out.